Hello and welcome back. Today's lecture is Lecture 7-3 on Power Spectral Density. The objectives for today's lecture are to define the power spectrum and average signal power for a power signal and to solve problems to find the power spectrum and average signal power. Theory. Power spectral density is a way of illustrating the variation of signal power with frequency. It's connected to our last lecture where we looked at variations in energy with respect to frequency. It is a graph of power density in the signal versus frequency. And recall from the last lecture that only energy signals have an energy spectrum. So to deal with power signals, we need a Fourier transform version of the power spectrum. If a power signal x of t has a power spectrum s sub x of omega, then the average signal power p sub x is p sub x is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity s sub x of omega d omega over 2 pi. In this course, we will only be concerned with periodic power signals to find the power spectrum. Now suppose that x of t is a periodic signal with Fourier series coefficients x of k. We have the two-sided Fourier series power spectrum as shown here. We actually showed this before in a prior lecture, but it will be repeated here. So here we have our vertical axis, the magnitude of x of k squared. And then we have our horizontal axis, which can either be omega or k. So at zero, we have a stem that has a value of the magnitude of x of zero squared. At omega naught and negative omega naught, we're going to have stems with values of the magnitude of x of one squared. At two omega naught, we're going to have a stem and at negative two omega naught, we'll have a stem. Both of them have values of the magnitude of x of two squared. And so on. Notice that this has even symmetry, which is why I have written x of one squared, although it's really x of negative one squared, they will be the same. The average power based upon Parseval's theorem is that p sub x is equal to 1 over t naught, the integral over one period, the magnitude of x of t squared dt, which is equal to the summation from k is equal to negative infinity to infinity, the magnitude of x of k squared. And recall also that we found the Fourier transform in terms of Fourier series as x of j omega is equal to the summation from k is equal to negative infinity to infinity, x of k delta of omega minus k omega naught. We're going to use those two equations in order to solve for the power spectrum s sub x of omega. So p sub x is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity s sub x of omega d omega over 2 pi. That's copied from the prior page. And we set that equal to the Parseval's theorem, 1 over t naught, the integral over 1 period, the magnitude of x of t squared dt, which equals the summation from k equals negative infinity to infinity of 2 pi, the magnitude of x of k squared times 1 over 2 pi. Notice that last equation is just really the magnitude of x of k squared, but we've added a 2 pi and a divide by 2 pi in order to make it look similar to our original integral. So then when we solve for sx of omega, we know this has to be the Fourier transform, although we were dividing by 2 pi, so now it's the Fourier transform, but multiplied by 2 pi. So s of x of omega, the power spectrum has to be 2 pi, the summation from k equals negative infinity to infinity, the magnitude of x of k squared, delta of omega minus k omega naught. It is very important to emphasize here that s x of omega is not equal to x of j omega, the magnitude squared, because there's no definition for squaring an impulse. And that the Fourier transform power spectrum is given by the following graph. So the Fourier transform power spectrum is given by the following. We have s x of omega, the label for our vertical axis, our horizontal axis is omega. It's going to be even symmetry again, but now these are weighted impulses, not stems. And the weighted impulses, this one is 2 pi times the magnitude of x of 0 squared. And then at omega naught and negative omega naught, We have 2 pi, the magnitude of x of 1 squared. And over here also, 2 pi, the magnitude of x of 1 squared. Then at 2 omega naught, 
and negative 2 omega naught, we have 2 pi times the magnitude of x of 2 squared. And over here, 2 pi times the magnitude of x of 2 squared, and so on. Example 1. Suppose x of t is equal to a cosine omega naught t. What is the power spectrum? So first we're going to rewrite x of t using Euler's identity as x of t is equal to a over 2 e to the j omega naught t plus a over 2 e to the negative j omega naught t. And so what we see here is this term represents k equals 1. This term represents k equal to negative 1. So this means that x of 1 is equal to x of negative 1, which equals a over 2. So now if we find the Fourier transform of x of t, x of j omega, x of j omega is equal to pi a delta of omega minus omega naught plus pi a delta of omega plus omega naught. So a sketch of the Fourier transform would look like the following. x of j omega, and here's our horizontal axis omega, and there would be two impulses on it with an area underneath of pi a, and one would be at omega naught, and one would be at negative omega naught. Now let's find the Fourier series power spectrum, which we can find by finding the magnitude of x of k squared, and we only have the magnitude of x of 1 squared, which is equal to the magnitude of x of negative 1 squared, which equals a squared over 4. So the Fourier series power spectrum would look like the following. It's going to be a stem plot. at negative omega naught and omega naught. And the value of each of these stems is a squared over four. And the average power, which is found from summing from k equals negative infinity to infinity of the magnitude of x of k squared would be equal to a squared over four plus a squared over four which equals a squared over 2. Next, we're going to find the Fourier transform power spectrum, which is s sub x of omega is equal to 2 pi, the summation from k equals negative infinity to infinity, the magnitude of x of k squared, delta of omega minus k omega naught. So the plot of x sub x of omega looks like the following. These are now going to be impulses. There's going to be two, one here and one here. And their values are going to be found from the prior plot by multiplying by two pi. So you're going to have a value pi a squared over two, delta of omega minus omega naught, plus pi a squared over two, delta of omega plus omega naught. So here are my impulses at negative omega naught, zero and omega naught. And the area under each of these impulses is pi a squared over two and pi a squared over two. So now I want to solve for the average power again to confirm I do have conservation of power. So it should be the same as what I had before. So px is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity, s sub x of omega, d omega over 2 pi, which equals 1 over 2 pi, the area under each of those impulses. So pi a squared over 2 plus pi a squared over 2, which does indeed equal a squared over 2. Example two, suppose x of t is equal to the summation from k is equal to negative infinity to infinity, rect of t convolved with delta of t minus 3t. What is the power spectrum? 
The first thing I'm going to do is to sketch X of T. X of T is a pulse train with a rect with a width of one. So this is negative one half, zero, one half. The amplitude is one and it repeats at three and negative three and goes on both directions. So T naught is equal to three seconds and omega naught is equal to two pi over three radians per second. So you can calculate the Fourier series and the Fourier series is X of K equal to one third sinc of K over three. So here's a sketch of X of K. It's a sink, so I will make a sink envelope and then I will mark off the values on it. So here's our sink. And it crosses the zero at three omega naught and six omega naught. And negative three omega naught and negative six omega naught. So X of K has a value of one third at the origin and then we have values here and this value is one third sink of one third one third sink of two thirds one third sink of four thirds and one third sink of five thirds. It has even symmetry. So the values are the same on this side. So there's the Fourier series X of K. The Fourier transform X of J omega is equal to two pi the summation from K equals negative infinity to infinity x of k delta of omega minus k omega naught so we're going to take our x of k and multiply the magnitudes by 2 pi and it's going to become weighted impulses so x of j omega will also have an envelope of a sink so here's our envelope again with zero crossings at six omega naught, three omega naught, negative three omega naught, and negative six omega naught. And now we're going to draw our weighted impulses. So at the origin, we have an impulse with an area underneath of two pi over three. And then we have impulses at omega naught, two omega naught, four omega naught, five omega naught. For the impulse at omega naught, it's two pi over three, sink of one third. For the impulse at two omega naught, it's two pi over three, sink of two thirds. For the impulse at four omega naught, it's two pi over three, sink of four thirds. And the one at five omega naught, it's two pi over three, sink of five thirds. And these impulses continue to track the sink. Next, we're going to draw the Fourier series power spectrum, which is the magnitude of X of K squared. Once again, it's going to track a sink However, because it's squared, the sink will always be above the frequency axis. So the sink now has the following shape, where it still hits the zero at negative six omega naught, negative three omega naught, zero, three omega naught, six omega naught. And this would of course go on in both directions. So because it's squared, the values of the weighted impulses are the, 
So because it's squared, it's going to be a stem plot where the values of the stems are squared from x of k. So at the origin, that's going to be a stem that's 1 9th. At omega naught, we're going to have a stem that's 1 9th sinc squared of 1 3rd. At 2 omega naught, we're going to have a stem that's 1 9th sinc squared of 2 thirds. Then it hits the zero. At 4 omega naught, we'll have a stem that's 1 9th sinc squared of 4 thirds. And at 5 omega naught, we're going to have a stem that's 1 9th sinc squared of 5 thirds. We have even symmetry, so the magnitudes are the same on this side. And finally, let's find the Fourier transform power spectrum. So S, X of omega, is equal to 2 pi. The summation from K is equal to negative infinity to infinity. The magnitude of X of K squared, delta of omega minus K omega naught. So the shape's going to be the same as the prior graph. However, now these are weighted impulses. So once again, they're going to track the sinc squared envelope, so it's going to look like the following, except it'll be all positive values. And it's going to hit the axis at three omega naught, six omega naught, negative three omega naught, negative six omega naught. So I'm going to draw these as impulses. So at zero, I have a weighted impulse with an area underneath of two pi over nine. Then I'll have an impulse at omega naught and two omega naught, four omega naught and five omega naught. The one at omega naught has an area underneath of two pi over nine, sinc squared of one third. The one at two omega naught has a value of two pi over nine, sinc squared two thirds. The one at four omega naught has a value of two pi over nine, sinc squared, four thirds. And the one at five omega naught has a value of two pi over nine, sinc squared, five thirds. And remember, although I haven't shown it here, this plot would go on in both directions. So let's put dot, dot, dot here, and dot, dot, dot. And then let's show the weighted impulses on the other side because this does have even symmetry. So here's the one at negative omega naught, negative two omega naught, negative four omega naught, and negative five omega naught. And this concludes today's lecture on power spectral density.